Well, hello, hello, everybody. How are you all doing today? Uh, I figured today we could do something a little bit different than I see most often. I see a lot of North America, a lot of South America. I see some Europe and Asia all over the place. I don't see a lot of Australia. And given the fact that a lot of my ability to fly the 319 came from like two hours of instruction that I got from an actual A320 pilot uh, who is based in New Zealand, I figured today would be a good day to start doing some New Zealand flights. So we're sitting here in Auckland and I, I, I'm not going to pronounce any of this correctly. Um, I am not Australian don't know how to speak with the proper accent. Uh, I can imitate it poorly, but I, I don't think that's the best idea for me right now. So most of this scenery is absolutely beautiful here in Auckland. A um, lot of attention to detail. Um, I don't know that I would quite call it pay wear level, you know, when you've got these I mean, they just took the ortho and they didn't clean it up anywhere. They didn't decide to put the actual rendered vehicles. So this could all use a little bit of cleaning up. Um, but overall, this is pretty good. Uh, these could use some smoothing, unless these are actually how they handle the tiles in the uh, real world. But I don't think it is, so it's probably best to, to clean this up a little bit, smooth out those those jaggies. And then there's this. <laughs> um, if that's ocean, and I, th I think it is, uh, it, it shouldn't just be grass up to the edge like that. Like, this is supposed to be a coast. Or it's not. Uh, on the other side should either be grass that keeps going, or coast that keeps going. I'm, I'm not sure... What's quite going on there? Uh, this is all clearly water. You can even see the bridge and everything, so... That's clearly supposed to be water. Um, but other than that, this, this whole area is just really well done. Um, I'm very, very happy with how well this is, this is made. Um... You got proper lane markings on the, the taxiways. I mean, that one seems a little off. <laughs> but it's well within tolerances. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, however, and, and if you are interested in this scenery, go ahead and hit exclamation point scenery in chat. And the bot will link you to this scenery. However, it will also tell you that today we have uh, scenery for Christchurch, which is where we're landing. However, it's not good. Uh, I wouldn't even say it's okay. I'd almost prefer to just land with default scenery. I'm not even sure what the default scenery is. Even if it's just flattened ground, I think it'd probably be better than what we've got. But we do have it. I'm not going to link it because I don't think it's worth uh, spreading his name for it. Um, I will, however, give some advice as to what I think needs to be fixed. Kind of the same way I did here. A couple of points, you know, this this needing to be smoothed out and turned into ocean. Um, these look pretty cool. I like these. Uh, th this probably needs to be three dimensions. Uh, clean up some of this ortho around the, the parking lots. Um, I'm not sure if you've done what the... I, I don't think this guy has done what the uh, Christchurch guy did. So that's good. Because um, the Christchurch... Well, 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 we'll get there when we get there. So all of these are all modeled. Uh, I don't love the static aircraft being there. I'm not a big fan of static aircraft. Why? Because sometimes I'm going to be parking at these at these terminals, and if I do that, I'm going to be inside of another aircraft, and that's not good. Uh, we don't want to do that. But anyway, let's jump into the cockpit, and let's get this thing ready to roll. Let's do our preliminary pre-flight procedures. We're going to turn on our batteries, one and two. 
Uh, ground recorder. Um, external power on. Check that all our fuel pumps are off, and they are. Then we need to load our fuel. Alright, so let me grab my load sheet here. Go to my Tolis plug-in. By the way, seat in chat right now is going to be a little bit difficult. Uh, I do have it in a place where I can somewhat see it. However, my attention is going to be all on the aircraft while I'm getting it set up. Uh, our, our flight is a little short today. Uh, about an hour and 25 minutes usually takes me about 25 to 30 minutes to, to set up in taxi. So um, I'm hoping that we wind up in the right ballpark. Uh, I may do a little more talking than usual, either before or after. Obviously, I've done a little bit more before already. Um, so, I'm going to be doing that basically just to eat up the couple of minutes that might be left free. Alright, so let's look at our loading. We have 145 passengers today. That is a full cargo hold. Uh, or a full passenger compartment, and ah, oh, this thing didn't listen to my cargo restrictions. I told it that I was bringing two tons of cargo, and it doesn't want to bring two tons of cargo. So we're gonna bring 700 kilograms of cargo, even though that seems not correct at all. And of course, my passenger distribution does nothing because every seat is full, which. Never, ever, ever happens. Just to be clear. Alright, we're going to load those flight settings. Alright. So now that we have loaded our fuel and our passengers, we're going to do our APU fire test. Sounds good. And APU master switch. Mm, let's, let's skip turning on the APU for now. Um, cockpit lights and McDo's as required. I don't want to waste too much fuel sitting here on the run, on the, uh, apron. Configuring my McDo's. We're also flying a lot earlier than usual. Um, this is actual, like, real time. Uh, which means it's like 9 a.m. Oh my god, head bob. Alright. Cockpit lights, McDo's. Flap lever, match e cam. Speed brakes, uh, retracted. Probe window heat auto. APU bleed when available on. Air conditioning panel, no white. Uh, cross bleed set to auto. Air conditioning, temperature as required, generator 1 and 2, fault lights, check on external power off, which we can't do yet because we don't have our APU on, electrical panel, all lights off, ventilation, all lights off, preliminary pre-flight procedure is complete. Alright, let's get our adheres onto nav so they can start aligning, strobe lights set to auto, wing lights on, nav and logo system 1. Uh, seat belts on, no smoking, set to auto, emergency exit lights armed, uh, landing elevation set auto, pack flow will need to be high today, or no, no, uh, normal, high as if we are, actually we probably should, what's our... Yeah, we are really, really humid today, so I'm going to set pack flow to high. Alright, pack flow. Fuel pumps all on. Engine 1 and 2 fire tests. All right, and then we're Bruh. turning on. 
Thank you very much for that, Angelic Bird. I appreciate it so, so much. Um, knowing that you're here, I, and, and I did see you, and I may have forgotten to say anything because I saw you, like, two minutes before um, I went live, so, or when, before I turned on my mic, and I may have forgotten to say anything, and I apologize for that if I did. Um, okay, so diff sips. Uh, data is bad. Our error act cycle is way out of date. That's from August 2017. But it's what we're going to use because it's all we've got. I don't have a Navigraph subscription. Uh, I wish I did, but I don't. We're going from NZAA to NZCH. IRS. Flight number today is NZ519. Real life flight? No, it does not use an A319. It is going to use an A319 today. Cost index ME5. As usual, our cruise flight level uh, is going to be 340. Nice and high. Grab our climb winds. Perfect. And now we get to do our flight plan. Okay. So, let me jump back to my flight planning page. So today, we're going to use runway 05 right. And we're going to use the Paddle to Quebec. And we're going to use, uh, I don't think it is a transition here. Okay. And that should get us to Pagla. And then we're going to go to M. From there, we're jumping on Airway Hotel 252 until November Sierra. And then we're jumping on the Peaks. And then we'll be on our Peaks arrival. So we're going to be on the ILS 0 era, I think. Look at the charts I've pulled up. Yes, RNAV or ILS 20 C. Via Peaks 7 Bravo. We'll do 6 Bravo because it's old and we're coming from DC obviously no transition that should give us yep alright that should be perfect. No discontinuities. Everything looks correct as per the flight plan. Perfect. Okay, so that's that handled. Let's go ahead and get our uh, GP or APU started. to get started into our uh, procedures here. And switch these over to hectopascals. This is nope, we need 122.20. This is Auckland INTL Information Whiskey. 2219 Zulu. Visibility greater than 10. 
temperature 13, dew point 12, wind 130 at 3, altimeter 1018. Advise you have information whiskey. End of information whiskey. 1018 this is Auckland's information, information whiskey. whiskey. 2220 all right, so that's our altimeters set. Flight director. Flight director's both on. Speed should be in managed mode. I'm not sure why it's not. Give that APU just a little bit of time to spin up. APU is available, APU bleed is on, external power is off. Let's do our init B, that's probably why. All right, so we are taking off flaps to Our zero fuel weight is 56.0 tons. Our center gravity is 27.2. Block fuel is going to be 7.5. Performance. All right. V1, 149. V rotate, 149. We can use the whole goddamn runway. And abort at any time. V2 is 152. Flaps is going to be 2 slash up 0 0.5. And our flex temp is 60 degrees. Perfect. Alright, that puts that speed into manage mode. Perfect. And then we are going to set our. Well, we're going to wait. We don't have hydraulics yet. Okay, so AP bleed IRS aligned in one minute. So our flight director is on. Speed is dashed. Heading will soon be dashed. Altitude we're going to set to ATC cleared. Now, if I'm looking at my Auckland departure, we be at or above 3,000, at or above 6,000. At 10,000. So 10,000 is our first restriction. Um, It's supposed to be normal, but mm, okay. So initial climb, track zero five one to Adcom. And right, wait, zero five one. Hopefully, I've got the right SID. All right, so. Might be turn right track two three one via Vinod to Pagla. All right, happy limes, Pablo. Pagla track two three one to ten thousand mandatory left turn at ten thousand. So it looks like um, the only restriction I have is ten thousand at Pablo. So we will do ATC cleared to ten thousand. And then after we clear Pagla, then I will go to our full 340. All right, so FCU uh, altitude set to ATC cleared. Anti-skid nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel is all normal. Transponder uh, we're not going to worry about because we are not flying online. Beacon should be coming on. 
Hey, thank you so much, Theta Cool, for that follow. I appreciate it so, so much. We do this every week on Tuesday and uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, we don't do flights. Wednesday, we do uh, more classic style RPG type games. Uh, but Tuesday is our flight day. We always do that. I, I know it's not a very popular thing, but it's what I'm into. All right, so we're going to get our engine start procedures. Where do we need to go today? We need to go to runway 20. Are we having to do a back taxi here? Why is it twisting like this? Okay. Explain. Okay, that's runway five. I'm definitely going this way. Mm. Camera system, please. Alright, so we're going to two, three left. So that means I need to tail left. Better push back, pre plan. And come straight back and tail left. Nope, nope, nope. It's a little smoother. There we go. Ground to cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. All right, we are ready for our pushback. Ground and cockpit, tow is driving up. Our IRS is aligned, everything is ready to go. Make sure our door is shut. Go ahead and lock it. Oh, this one thing I want is your switches. Please allow me to use the mouse wheel in order to scroll them. I would very much appreciate that. All right, and we're about to be off. So uh, one thing I do want to mention is that we do have... Um, okay, all doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. We do have scenery on the way out and on the way in. Uh, here in Auckland, it's actually pretty good. Uh, in Christchurch, not so much. So I'm not going to be linking the uh, scenery for Christchurch. It, it's, it's, it needs a lot of work. I don't want to say it's bad, Especially since it was the developer's first time making a scenery, but this was first made in, I want to say, 2014, updated in 2016, or maybe it was 16 and 18, I'm not sure. Either way, it's been several, several years since this was developed, and um, there's some things that are so pretty connected. obvious that need fixing. Release parking brake. All right, release parking brake. It's going to send starting away that and you make jet our engine. All right, starting engines. Engine to ignition mode. Engine to starting. Then we're going to wait for 25% into rotation. You can probably do it at 20, but I like to be real sure I've got positive start. All right, positive start, engine two, engine one coming on. And that's positive start, engine one. Engine mode back to normal. APU bleed off. AP, or, uh, pardon me, uh, ground spoilers arm, flap set for takeoff, uh, pitch trim set for takeoff, which was, I don't remember. 
up 0.5. That's an unusual one. Five. Perfect. Engine wing anti-ice. APU master off. Right, and we are up to our taxi procedures. Everything else is completed. Uh, better pushback. What are you doing? What are you doing? Better pushback. You okay? Is the uh, is the tug driver drunk? Operation complete. Go ahead and set the parking brake. I'm going to go ahead and set the parking brake, and I have made a mistake. I am arriving by runway 220. I am departing runway 5. So, we're just going to hang right here. Luckily, we're far enough back. We should be fine to do that. I was going to take a minute to kind of remember what the ground looks like here. Because that's going to be, that's going to tell me when I'm at the ground in Christchurch, right? Because this, the horizon line, everything is going to look the same no matter where I'm at in the A319. disconnected and bypass spin has been removed. Hand signal on the left. We'll see you next time and have fun up there. All right, hand signal's going to be on the left, and then we're going to be immediately making a hard right turn. We need to be on this line. Pop out any second now. There we go. That's our signal. All right, nose wheel, light to taxi, and then we are going to uh, release our parking brake. Start our timer. Go ahead and hang this hard, hard right. Brakes are good. Flight controls. Pull right. Pull left. Pull up. Pull down. So we are going to be back taxiing a bit. Since we don't want to actually run onto the runway, we we'll take Alpha all the way to the end. Hey, Angelic Bird, thank you so much for those bits. <laughs> no, you didn't miss any streams. I missed streams. I have had a really bad time keeping track of time lately. Uh, mostly because my so. I used to work in an office, and then my office got moved to a cave, and now my office is at home. Um, ever since there was a there was a fire at the cave, so it's hard to to mark time. Like it used to be, as soon as I got home from work, I would prepare for my stream, uh, no matter what day of the week it was, because I set my stream time based on when I got off work. Um, FMA to nav and climb, auto brake set max, uh, terrain on ND if necessary. It's not really, but we're going to turn it on anyway. Cabin calls, takeoff config check, ecam no blue. Perfect. Um, that was kind of how I, I worked it out was that when I got off, plus the time it takes me to get home, Plus the about 15 to 30 minutes it takes for me to set up a stream. That's when my stream starts. Uh, now that I'm not traveling home, it's kind of esoteric. When do I, you know, set up my stream? Um, and if I'm if I miss it, if I blow through that time frame where I can get set up reasonably. There's not a lot I can do. Um, I, I would prefer to miss a stream than to start 15 minutes late. If you get me. 
Um, I don't like that idea. I don't like that position, but it's it's been one that I've had since I started. Um, and I think it's the direction that I do want to stay going. Um, so I'm sorry if I do miss a stream or two. It does happen. Um, but I do try to at least always hit these flight streams. These are the ones that are the most important to me. I have alarms set for them. I have actually like three different alarms set just to, just to make sure I never miss this stream. Probably should set those for my other streams too, but they're less dependent on, you know, interaction. I like these streams better because I can interact with, with chat, right? At least when I'm not setting up and taking down, uh, you know, when, it, when I'm setting up and, and on climb and on uh, descent and approach, then I, I usually have to pay attention to it. But, like, cruise, cruise is when I get to just hang out with you guys and have fun. And that's my favorite part of these streams is, is interacting with you guys. All right, so we're going to pull in here. Slow down. And then we are going to back taxi. Uh, I probably don't need it. There's probably plenty of runway for me to to get up to speed and get taken off and get off the ground but i don't want to risk it i do want to make sure i have the full runway just in case something goes wrong i don't think there's any way that i would like you know blow an engine or something but i'd rather have the the space and not need it than need it and not have it Look at our before takeoff procedure. Slow this bird down a little bit. So as not to give the uh, passengers a little bit of a scare. As we make this turn. Okay. Set our transponder to TARA. Break temperature. All good. Runway turn of flights on. Landing lights on. Nose wheel light to take off. All right. Chrono start. Engines to 50%. Stabilized. Board pressure. Set flex. All right, let's try and hold that center line. Speed's alive, 80 knots. Leasing that back pressure. B1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. And then we're going to go to the climb to tent.
Goes down. Laps one, speed checked. Go ahead and get the autopilot going. Let's disarm our speed brakes. Ground spoilers, I should say. Nose wheel lights off. Run runway turnoffs off. Be checked. Flaps zero. Uh, nose wheel lights. Runway turnoff lights are off. Autopilot's on. Thrust lever is at the climb detent. Flaps are retracted. Engine mode is on normal. Engine anti ice is on. Uh, if necessary, and it's definitely not. Uh, landing lights off at flight level 10. Flight level 100. Uh, FCU altitude set to cruise altitude once we clear um, 10,000 at Agla. Turn this down a little bit so we can see more of exactly where we're flying. And, Angelic Bird, you say, uh, I wish people that love aviation would watch your streams. I would love for more people to watch my streams, especially people that are into aviation that, that actually like this stuff. Uh, I love it, and I think that a lot of my, my viewers are starting to enjoy it. But it's definitely something that they've come to love because I love it and I do it. Not that, you know, it's something that they loved to begin with. Um, and I would definitely love for more people to, more people like that that will get into it because of watching me, and also, um, I would love to see more people, um, more people that already love it to come in, because I am not afraid of criticism, criticism, right? If I'm screwing something up, I want to know, because I want to get better, and I will never get better if I can't handle somebody telling me that I'm doing it wrong. So I'm totally fine hearing that I'm doing it wrong. I, I do hope that anytime that somebody tells me I'm doing it wrong, that they've got some advice on how to do it right. Um, that's absolutely what happened. I had a, uh, an A320 pilot that popped into my stream maybe two or three months ago and actually took me to a stream of his and taught me how to land the plane. Um, and since then, it literally overnight cut my landing rates in half. All right, so we're coming through 10,000 feet. I'm going to turn off our landing lights. We're getting up above that weather pattern. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and turn on our weather radar. That's something I should have done, but it's not on my checklist. I don't know why. Go ahead and... Weather and turbulence. Up on the map. Once we get through Pagla at 10,000, then we will ascend. Now, see, in a situation like this, I would probably ask ATC for a higher clearance. I don't know if that's normal, but I would just feel more comfortable if I could properly see without this 10,000 foot restriction uh, until Pagla. We're close enough that they'd probably be able to give it to me. I would feel safer, my passengers would feel safer, I've got 145 people that could die at any minute because I can't see the ground coming, you know what I'm saying? Alright, so we're crossing Pagla, let's go ahead and dial up to 34,000 feet. And get the bus climbing. Also, fun fact, that yeet sound effect, that is actually my roommate, this is my landlord, that does that sound effect. That is not any post-processing other than just cleaning out background sound. That was just her saying yeet into my, uh, into my microphone. Uh, really funny thing, she, she's just got the most adorable voice, and very soon she's going to be starting to stream too. Oh, how did you like that cloud break? Breaking through those clouds was beautiful. And I do wish that we didn't have quite so many clouds. 
because we're flying over New Zealand. This is an absolutely beautiful area of the world. Um, and I wish we could see more of it, but instead, we're treated to absolute cloud cover. We'll have to come back here sometime when we're not so uh, cloud covered, when they've got a little bit better weather to, to look at. That is a hell of a leg. I think we need to part you have your auto brakes to max. Yeah, I had I, I did set mine to max. Uh, they they automatically turn off at some point. I'm not sure exactly when because I'm focusing on um, I'm focusing on the uh, the aircraft. But yeah, um, auto brakes being set to max is part of the taxi checklist. Yeah, auto brake max. Uh, I, I check at the same time I did the nav and climb, uh, the terrain, and cabin calls. But yeah, um, absolutely, auto brakes should be at max uh, when you're when you're on takeoff in case of a rejected takeoff. Um, they use a different name for it in Boeing. I think they call it uh, the RTO setting because it's for rejected takeoffs. Um, ironically, you can't use auto brake max for uh, landings. I'm not entirely sure why, probably because it would call it would cause too much heating or something, but uh, the Boeing the, the the bus just doesn't want to let you select that on uh, landings probably why they separate it there a little bit. Yeah, New Zealand loves clouds. I uh, the only place that loves clouds as much as New Zealand, I think probably Ireland and uh, Great Britain. You can see a little bit of poke through here. It's not much. But it's just as well because I, I don't have any ortho set up. Wifey on board before interview. Ooh, that's right. You've got an interview here in, what, uh, 13 minutes? Don't let us keep you from your interview. But uh, today we are flying in New Zealand. We are flying from Auckland to uh, Christchurch. Now, if I remember right, Christchurch has a uh, mountain nearby. Don't remember, I'm not for sure, but I think that's one of the ones that I, I watched a video on where it was gonna have a, uh, a mute the site when interview comes up. All right, good, don't let us make you late for your interview because uh, I'd be very mad at myself if that happened because of watching my stream. <laughs> That's a very important thing for all of you to know. Uh, real life for the stream, always real life. Like, especially when it comes to things like donations and, and things like that and showing up to streams. Guys, if, if your real life comes in the way, do not give up family time. Do not give up uh, work time. Do not give up money. None of that. You have a YouTuber that flies the A320. It's Brazilian. Oh, that's interesting. What uh, do you have their uh, their YouTube name? I always like to see more uh, flight sim, especially on YouTube. Um, they don't have so they've got a couple of big ones like Captain Canada. Um, but yeah, go ahead and throw his channel in in chat. Um, I'm not worried about it right now. Um, th there may came, come a time in the future where I have to be a little more restrictive on who I'll let throw links in chat, but right now I should have it set to where it's not moderated. Um, just in case, I'm going to throw one of these at you. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's already set. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. Oh, I can... Nope, nope, nope. We don't do that here. I will get in trouble. <laughs> For stealing his content. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that there, and then I'm gonna look at some of his content after I'm uh, done with my stream, and probably throw him a subscribe because um, you know the flight sim community it's real world small, um, but all the people that I've met in it, 
at least almost all the people that I've met in it, are really nice people, uh, very, very helpful. We are over 13,000 feet, and the Airbus is screaming at me, I'm sure, to set standard barrow, which it absolutely is. This was supposed to be at 1.8. I never did set my standby. Uh, he doesn't post anymore. Oh, that's sad. Okay. But I'll still look through his stuff, throw him a subscribe if, you know, if I'm enjoying the content. Um, maybe even, even if he's not uh, posting anymore... Seeing more subscribers show up and more likes showing up on his videos might, uh, it might get him to jump back in the cockpit, you know? Due to the airline conduct? Do you mean like his, his, his so he's a real world pilot and his carrier won't let him post anymore? Is that what you're saying? Because I know that there are some, uh, there are some pilots that are okay. Yeah, there are some. There are some carriers that are real, real particular. They haven't really figured out how beneficial that can be. Um, ooh, we've got a nice tailwind going right now. Nice. Good fifty knot tailwind. Um. So there, there are some other YouTubers that have done very good things. For their carriers, like Flight Deck to Sim. I'm not going to mention what what carrier he flies for. I do know what it is. Uh, most people know what it is, but he tries to keep it as secret as he can. But because people do actually know what it is, it has benefited them tremendously. Sounds good, wifey. Take care. Yeah, he flew with Tim. I don't know that iCal abbreviation, but um, or La that's Latin America. That that's Latin American Airlines, right? Um, uh, but also like mentor pilot, he's gotten he he's done a lot of good things. Okay. Uh, mentor pilot, um, Captain Joe, uh, V1 simulations, uh, flight deck to sim. I don't think flight chops actually flies for airlines, <laughs> but you know, these things, they benefit the airlines and I really wish that they were, you know, with it enough to know that these things can benefit them if they get out in front of it. The only way that it's going to hurt them is if they just let it sit there and do its own thing because then people will get the wrong idea. If they utilize it, they can actually improve public opinion of themselves rather than just, you know, irritating people with pedantic rules. Right? There's a lot of rules surrounding uh, broadcast of things. Uh, Nintendo's the same way, right? Nintendo has managed to alienate a lot of people because they're so particular about content claiming everything that, that contains any footage from one of their games. Um, so people actually really dislike Nintendo for that. And it's kind of the same way with, with flights, you know? I would love to see more actual cockpit video. And at least when there's nothing going on, no nothing out of the ordinary... I don't see why they wouldn't consent to releasing that information, to, to, to having a pilot be able to release that as long as, you know, pilot, co-pilot, anybody going on in the flight crew, everybody's on board with it. It doesn't release for a couple of days after the, um, after the flight, so it's not like somebody knows when, where exactly the, the, the plane is going to be. Um... You know, I'm not sure. I, I don't think... I don't think that, that should be such a big deal, but I do understand why there are so many restrictions on the industry in general. You know, especially after 9-11. Um, there have been a lot of changes to the airline industry where security is concerned. And I understand where they come from. I don't necessarily like them, but I do understand them. Um, 
it is frustrating to not be able to visit the cockpit anymore. Uh, my last flight, I would have loved to have jumped up and looked at the cockpit because I had gotten into flight sim. Uh, I was actually flying on... I want to say it was a CRJ? It was either a CRJ or an A220. Um, the last one that I flew. And I would have loved to just take a look at the cockpit, see what it looks like, you know, get a feel for where things are. And, and be able to ask a few questions about, you know, things that I don't understand exactly what they're for. Um, although at this point, I think I do understand everything going on here. Um, I, I think I actually know what every control on here does. Um, this I don't. I don't know these. I guess uh, that's probably for this thing. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, switching panel, I'm guessing that's to just change systems over from air data. So, it, to ECAM, ND transfer. I think it has something to do with switching between different systems in case one goes down. But all the rest of this, I think I understand everything going on here. This is the ADF uh, approach. Yeah, I think so. I think I do. I think I actually understand everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think I do. I, that actually surprised me because I got familiar. I got familiar. See, here's the thing. I never realized that I was familiar with all these controls <laughs> because... You don't learn them all at once, right? You learn a couple things here and there. Like, you find something on your checklist that you don't know where it's at. And then you learn where it's at. Everything, there's some things that are just intuitive as to where they are. And there's some things you got to look for. And then, you know, as you look over it, you start to realize, I know what absolutely everything here does. Um, you know, this controls the, the automatic direction finder. Uh, Pilot and co-pilot side, uh, or I should say pilot and first officer. Um, the, I think these were the last things that I learned was, was those maybe... No, I, th I think those were the last ones. I think that's the last thing, yeah. Ooh, I might not know what these are. I'm not just going to push them. <laughs> That'd be fun, right? Just start pushing things and see what happens. But I think those four buttons are the last things that I don't know. I need more people to see my stuff. I would love for more people to see my stuff. And I would also love for more people to, to watch other streamers too. Like Captain K-Man, Captain Canada, uh, V1... Flight Deck to Sim. Flight Deck to Sim's a really nice dude. I really like him. Um, and he's a real world pilot. Captain Can is a sim, sim pilot like me. Uh, V1 is a real real world bus pilot. Um, but yeah, if you want to share the, the stream with anybody, please do. Um, I'm not going to, like, judge anybody for not doing it. We all just enjoy what we like, and I'd like to keep a nice, easy, no-stress environment for people, right? Some people get get stressed out when there's too many people. You saw Captain Canada? Yeah, I, I actually learned a lot from watching other people's streams, including Captain Canada's. We are having a lot of turbulence. Why are we, why are we having so much turbulence? Weather radar is not showing anything.
That's very, very concerning. Hmm. We should not be shaking about so much like this. I'm going to leave the seat belts on for now. I'd love to take them off, but I feel like we're doing too much jiggling and moving. Um, but yeah, like, I have learned so much from watching other streamers, and I've put, I've tried to put all that together into making my own stream and trying to make it as enjoyable and fun and informative as I can. And the important part is being able to sit here and go, yeah, that I don't know. I don't know what that does. I don't know how that works. Hey, thank you so much for more bits. <laughs> Morbid. I forgot that that my uh, that, that I'm gonna call that my co-pilot. My co-pilot here uh, was gonna read that out. I forgot about that. Uh, but yeah, more bits. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, those absolutely add up. Uh, most people they don't think about it. They're like, oh, it's five bits. I'm not gonna worry about it. It adds up. After a couple of you know a couple of streams, you wind up giving you know a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. You know, I mean, a sub only gives me. 250 right I'm, I'm I'm sure I know when I become a partner they won't let me say things like that but when you give a sub you get you give half of that value to, to twitch right but with bits especially ones you get from ads twitch gets nothing I get a penny per bit so it may not seem like much you know 10 bits 10 bits but that's 20 bits that's 20 cents in one stream you know, I do four streams. Uh, I, I do four streams a month minimum. I try to aim for something more like twelve to sixteen. So if I'm doing sixteen streams a month and you're doing two dollars, uh, you know, two, twenty cents a piece, that's, you know, you're, you're you're looking at a sub's worth of money just from donating 10, 20 bits a stream. People don't think about it, but it adds up fast. You know, that's that. Those bits, it doesn't take much. If you're there on a regular basis and you throw bits whenever you can, you'll make a streamer very, very happy. A streamer would rather have you show up every stream and throw ten bits than to show up once a month and throw a sub. Most of them, anyway. Especially because of how much it helps us in the algorithm and and on the in the hoppers to be able to have. Uh, more people in the stream like right now I'm gonna take a look real quick and this might get me in trouble try to real quiet it's about to start screaming Maybe not, but, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm gonna look at the hopper for X plane 11 and currently we're number four because of you guys because of you guys being here we're number four. If we had even one person less, we'd drop down into the second line, right? So right now we're on the top. We're on the top panel, right? We're up there with uh, 757 Spy, uh, Oops, Lupus in Game, and Alex 62F. Um, looks like somebody's doing LSGG L LFK. Okay, I don't know what those are. Looks like somebody's doing a two. Oriole in X-Plane, but this this is in Italian. You got a French pilot, an Italian pilot, and 757 Spy, which is doing the A321. Uh, what is that? Vancouver to... Oh, he's in Poscon. And he's going from, I think... I think that's... Let's see why, why, see. Oh, oh. My apologies, guys. I just knocked over my uh, water bottle. I, I'm sorry for that noise. Um, but yeah, uh, he's, he's flying in PauseCon. Now, we are a part of PauseCon. I have not flown it live for two reasons. One is because I am extremely unfamiliar with radio calls. I am not good with them yet. I, I do have a cheat sheet that somebody helped, helped me by, by pointing out some things that I need to announce. Um, unfortunately, the primary reason 
why I have not done a live stream on PauseCon yet is because PauseCon is um, right now their ATC is not live. They're they're doing ATC on their internal servers, so they've got basically they've got their internal stuff that they're currently developing, and then they've got the beta server. And right now, all of the ATC is on their internal testing server. Um, so we don't have any actual ATC, which means that I'd be flying an A319 as though I was, you know, flying a Cessna. I'd, I'd be flying VFR. And, you know, or, or rather at ATC zero, right? And ATC zero is not a realistic thing. I don't think it's happened in the United States in a very long time. Um, so I couldn't get used to real world radio calls because there's no ATC. And that's really why I want to get on a network is to is to get used to real radio calls, make it feel like a real uh, flight. I do not in the slightest understand all this turbulence. We are doing a lot of shake here. I mean, I get it. We have a 38 knot uh, tailwind, but it should still be pretty smooth. At least this high up. I don't know if maybe it's real gusty? It shouldn't be. And I am so proud of this livery. I, I can't even tell you guys. I made this livery myself, just so y'all know. This is an original Air Attack invention. I made this livery, and it looks spectacular. And we're definitely getting a lot of wing, wing flex here. And I'm not 100% sure why. Hopefully it'll smooth out soon. Looks like I'm probably not going to be able to uh, epic mode active. Yeah, I mean... Oh, this is so rough though. Oh! Oh, what's going on? Engines, are you okay? Why are you at idle? Whoa! That must be a weather update. That had to be a weather update. I do not know what just happened. I do know our speed dropped really fast. Oh, our tailwind dropped off too. We dropped 20 knots.
I'll bet you that was a wind shear. Uh, I'm definitely glad that we still have our seatbelts on. I'm gonna risk taking another look outside. Yeah, that wing flex is going insane. What is going on? Explain. Please explain to me. Well, it looks like we are out from over the clouds. That's a good thing. Alright, so when we come down, I do need to start briefing this stuff, probably. Alright, so when we come down, we're going to need to be at peaks at or above 11,000. So we're going to set our descent to 11,000 when we're ready for, when we hit our uh, top of descent. So we need to be at 11,000 at peaks, and then we need to be down to 7,000 at blunt at or above 6,000 by Charlie Hotel 404. Max 210 knots indicated airspeed and at or above 3,000 by Odyssey. And then max 170 knots indicated at Divsu. In Divsu, we need to be at Me restriction. If see that on. If see it two. Th no. But if if see still at three. No, if see is at two. Okay, I'm all right. If see is at two. And then we intercept the uh, glide slope to about 0.8 nautical miles with Foxtrot, Foxtrot 2. How far are we from the top of this? About 80 miles, 60 miles. if it's going to let me grab descent wind yet. Nope. Nope. It looks like we are going to have seatbelts on the whole way there today because this is a bit more head shake, a bit more violent turbulence than I'm prepared to release the passengers during. I'll go ahead and set this to 12230. That is the helpful tool that Sim Toolkit gives me to check my Metar in flight. Vibrations are awful high. Hmm. I don't like this. 
Of course, there's not really anywhere to, like, divert and land, so... today flight connection but yeah the only things yeah we don't have anything that we can land on closer than flight uh, Christchurch morning What? <laughs> just, just so happens that my standby, uh, my standby frequency. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I'm not going to be mad about that. <laughs> Woodburn. Or where is Woodburn? I have no idea. Woodburn information, Charlie. Twenty two hundred smooth weather. With flight and variable. Visibility more than ten. Sky conditions twenty three thousand overcast. Temperature five. Alright. Altimeter three zero. Let's not worry about that right now. We're about 30, 25 miles out. I'm gonna ask for destination data. All right, let's go ahead and switch this over. Oh, that's one, two, three. Point this is Christ Church INTL Information X Ray. 2317 Zulu. Visibility greater than 10. Temperature 6. 2.5. Line 240 at 2. Altimeter 1026. One zero Advise you have information X Ray. End of information X Ray. This is Christ Church INTL Information X Ray. 2. Okay, we're about 20 miles away. So that wind. Alright, now we are going to descend to 11,000. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Okay, let's go ahead and start doing some of our checklists. Landing elevation set to auto. MCTU arrivals is completed. Performance approach is completed. Top of descent winds should pop up any time now. Any time now. Any time now, airplane. 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 Airplane, airplane does not want to work. That's fine. Uh, if we don't have top of descent winds, we just won't have top of descent winds. That's fine. Let's see, what are we doing? Winds 240 at 2. That's perfect. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. So airport elevation is going to be at 1, 2, 3 feet. RNAV, GSS required. All arrivals descend to ATC cleared level via published profile. Uh, arrivals crossing uh, November Zulu Oscar, November Zulu Charlie FIR boundary at Lala. Uh, arriving aircraft are to fly the repap arrival as per runway in use on the Christchurch ATIP. 
Uh, Arrivals Crossing, November Zulu Zulu Oscar, November Zulu Zulu Charlie, Gar Flight Rule Boundary at Kapka or Vanda, arriving aircraft for the flight procedure applicable to the FIR boundary point. They are cross in the runway in use as per Christchurch. This and crossing FIR boundary, contact Christchurch. Control. A 128.1 reporting position, altitude and arrival. Perfect. Nothing to worry about there. I have no transition to worry about. So, track 174 to Blunt, then track 125 to Charlie Hotel 404 to Odisi, then track 196 to Ivsu. Advise on initial contact, you have Charlie. Whoa, okay, we jumped a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and start a descent. Windborne information, Charlie. Alright. Twenty two hundred Zulu weather. FCU altitude set and push. Altitude uh, speed brake half as required, not required at the moment. Altimeter set Q and H. We will do that closer to a hundred uh, to thirteen thousand feet. Uh, landing lights on at 10,000, ND data to constraints. I can go ahead and get that out of the way. I'm also going to turn on airports. Um, FCU LS as required. We're not there yet. Make do Radnav. We won't have to worry about, uh, but we will when we are a bit closer. Go ahead and turn this down a bit. Light and variable. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 23. No. There we go. I'm going to turn it off. Not going to worry about it. We are we are not flying real world. I know turning off the radio very bad thing. Also, I don't have guard frequency checked, which is also a very bad thing. I think that's 1215. Not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that's emergency frequency. All right, so we are descending towards peaks at 1 1,000. Looks like we've got quite the flight to get to peaks. About another 80 miles. This is that point where it's going to get a little more tough for me to respond to chat. I do have a small chat window directly in front of me. However, the majority of what I'm doing is going to be focusing on the aircraft and on my procedures that I'm flying on my way in. So we're going to be flying down to at or above 11,000 at peaks, down to 7,000 at Blunt, 6,000 at Charlie Hotel 404. And we're going to get kicked in the teeth by a crosswind. That's got to be a weather update. X-Plane, please. Can we not just go from an outdated weather to a new weather like that? Yeah, see, that's twice. Really, really quickly, it went from having like a... Um, we flipped to a 70-knot crosswind... And then it immediately dropped down to a 7-knot crosswind. X-Plane. Laminar. Please listen to me. Please hear me. Smoothing. Smoothing. There are very few weather conditions in the real world where actual weather, where actual winds, where anything changes this rapidly. It just doesn't happen. Um, outside of wind shears, right? Wind shears absolutely happen. But um, I can look at what, what's on my screen and see that when all the clouds pop out and then pop back in, that's because you're reloading the weather, right? There's a difference between you reloading the weather and there being a wind shear, right? If these, if these clouds stay where they are and then just we get slammed with, with, with wind, okay, I'm going to call that a wind shear. That's on me. Something like this, though. You reloaded weather 
And I don't know why you reloaded weather twice that quickly. But when you reload the weather, have it change to the new weather over the course of, say, a minute. Right? So have, have everything just gliding towards what the new weather is until at a minute, you're spot on. I know that it's it's not ter it's probably not easy, but it makes a lot more sense than this. Oh, suddenly we go from having a, a, a tailwind to a crosswind to a headwind, seven knots, seventy knots, eighty knots. Even wind shears don't shear that badly. Not generally, unless you're in some really bad weather. So, oh, Laminar, please. I've been I've been asking for this for months now, for years. Please give us weather smoothing. Don't just reload the weather and change it immediately. Gradually change your weather. Please. Please, please, please. And granted, I'm not a real world pilot. Maybe this is how weather behaves in an actual airplane. I don't think so, or I think we'd all be dead. Right? But, I'm pretty sure this is not how weather in the real world works. Pretty sure that you don't have these radical crosswinds that, that just come out of nowhere, 70 knots to 7 knots over the course of 30 seconds. I'm sure it can happen, but it's almost every time we reload the weather here in X-Plane... I don't think wind shears are happening that often, especially not when my uh, weather radar is not picking up any wind shears. I'm sorry, guys. You gotta work on this. This is not okay. Now, the thing is, what most people don't understand, right, is that Laminar is a very small team. It's like six people. There, there are not a lot of people. There. There's probably like one to two people working on any particular part at any given time. So I understand why their dev cycle is so long. I understand why certain quality of life changes are not happening. But I don't like it. And some of these are things that have been going on for years and years and years. And they need to be fixed. And especially with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 coming out next month like let's be clear folks i haven't even mentioned this yet microsoft flight sim has been announced its release date is august 18th and they have a very similar price point to x-plane you get 20 planes and 30 sceneries for 60 bucks you can get 25 planes and 35 sceneries for 90 bucks. You can get uh, 30 planes and 40 sceneries for 120 bucks. Now, let me be clear: when I say that they include sceneries, all the all all um, all the airports in the world are there as per ortho, and just like it was in FSX, just like it is in X plane. Um, but there are handcrafted ones that have been set up by hand by individual people who are making sure that it is appropriate and accurate to real world. Okay. I want to make sure also that I can hit that speed restriction at ODC. I need to be able to be at 210 knots indicated. Which it looks like that shouldn't be too hard. But, um, so for those 20, for those 30, 35, and 40 airports, um, somebody at Microsoft has gone and done study level and placement, these payware level, um, scenery. And the entire world will be covered in ortho. 
Um, they're going to be streaming an AI generated from Ortho um, scenery for the entire globe. So you won't have to have, you know, a 20 gig hard drive just for scenery anymore. Uh, plane, why do you not want to get the wind? Uh, it's not going to matter. It's all variable anyway. So, we are almost to peaks, and we need to be down to 11,000. Looks like we're getting a little high on our glide slope. Our descent profile is a little low. But it looks like we're catching up. What is our vertical deviation? Plus 40 feet. I'm not going to worry about it. Especially not when we... Oh, no, wait. Throttle idle. You said having a little idle icon up here, too. Let's take a look real quick. Yay. So about 6.45, I'm going to say we'll probably be in by 55. So just before the top of the hour, I think, is when we're going to land. See, now we've gotten a little bit smoother of a ride, but we no longer have to worry about it because um, we're, we're on approach. Uh, go ahead and grab... This is Christchurch INTL Information X-Ray. 2332 Zulu. Visibility greater than 10. Temperature 6. Dew point 5. Line 240 at 2. Altimeter 1026. Advise you have Information X-Ray. End of Information X-Ray. This is Christchurch INTL Information X-Ray. 2333 Zulu. Alright, 1026. Ooh. Real quick grab. MDA. Approach chart. We're reading something about MDA. Here it is. All right, so for class C, it's gonna be 740 feet. And given this weather, I'm not sure if we're gonna hit that or not. A little quartering tailwind now. Those are some beautiful clouds.
There's nobody flying the plane, guys! Which is actually true right now. There is nobody flying. Okay, this looks like we're getting a little close for comfort. We need to drop another 3,000 feet. All right, let's switch back to my approach and my star. Go down to 7,000. In. Here we go. All right, so we are about to cross peaks. A uh, slight deviation, it looks like 300 feet deviation. We can handle that. Actually, it's not a deviation because it's at or above 10,000. But we were above 10,000 by 300, 400 feet. So we're good. as we get lower we're gonna break through these clouds I'm not sure what the cloud cover is look at our tallest plug-in so I can look at the Metar overcast to 260 feet We can go ahead, we cross 10,000 feet, we can go ahead and turn our landing lights on. Landing lights, altimeter, ND data is constraints, FCU landing system. We can go ahead and turn it on. Not going to do anything yet. All right. So we have 7,000 by blunt. We need 6,000. ,000. 6,000 ,000 by Charlie Hotel 404. Well, let's go ahead and tell it to go down to 3,000 and it'll yell at me about constraints. No, Div Sue's at 2,000, so let's go ahead and go down to 2,000.
Okay, so by ODC, up there we'll need to be down to 210 knots speed restriction. Look at our flight plan. DC 210. Okay, perfect. Gonna decel us here. We'll go down to 225. Let's look at our approach procedures. FCU speed managed, dashed. Speed brakes as required, not required at the moment. Flaps one will be at 230 knots. Okay, so we're changing our speed constraints. 225. Under 230 knots, speed checked, flaps one. Now we're cleared to 3,000 for ODC. Looks like it deceled a little more than it needed to. But it's going to bring us down to 210 for ODC. We'll need to go down to 2,000 for IFS. And back. Welcome back, Wifey. You are just in time to see us on approach. We're about to land in Christchurch, New Zealand. Hopefully we will not crash because uh, look at this weather. We are, we are flying through the soup. The fingers and toes crossed. Absolutely will here by tomorrow evening. Fantastic. No water landings. Good not be. Definitely should not be any water landings. This is a nice long runway. We're landing during daytime. Um, local time's probably about uh, quarter 11 a.m. Right. We've already called flaps one. Speed brake is not needed. FCU. Uh, speed is dashed. AP. We're not on approach yet. Ooh, looks like we have actually tuned in. Go ahead and put on approach. 1 AP2. We're under an altitude restriction at the moment. We are bang on our glide path. We go ahead and call speed checked flaps to ground spoilers can be armed now. Auto brake, I'm gonna set low. <clears throat> The next flap extension, 185 knots. You're below that, speed checked, flaps three. You're down. Cam all green. Those will light the taxi. Runway turnoffs on. Landing lights checked. Calls have been made. We should be at 170 knots at Divsu. Flaps full. We want to be going nice and slow. 
down to about 140 knots, 139, somewhere in that ballpark. Now it's going to wait and hold this altitude. find the runway out there. I'm definitely not maybe is that it? Definitely something. It does seem like Okay, so we are captured on the glide slope and the localizer. thousand five hundred we are fully configured wait until I see that magical strip of lights there we are lights just popped in alright so we are we are on target we are bang on we have a six knot quartering headwind this is perfect these are the conditions I like to see. It's going to nudge us over to the right just a little bit. All right, so we are on our 3% grade down. Heading gear down, signs on, cabin ready, spoilers arms, flaps full, cabin has been advised, you've been advised, and we are ready to land. That's passing the outer marker, it's going to stop screaming at me here in a minute. Okay, let's get that recentered, and then let's take control. Be a little high. nose down a bit. Back up. We are way below. Unfortunately, I do not have any uh, rudder pedals. I'm doing all this with my joystick twist. Green. Bye. Reversers deployed. Lower the nose. Eating knots. Still reversers. Alright, and 50 knots. I'm going to start manual braking. Go ahead and vacate left. All 
All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Christchurch. Uh, this is not the best scenery. Um, now, I'm guessing some of this is the airfield itself, but there are some, let's say, issues. And I actually pulled off exactly where I intended to. I know exactly where I am. At least I think I do. We're going to slow down. We're going to start our APU as soon as we can. We're going to... We're going to pull into stand two here. Wonder if auto gate is going to work. Looks like that's a hard no. All right, so let's see. Roll out. Landing lights retracted. Ground spoilers disarmed. Engine mode normal. Flaps retracted. APU master on. APU start. We never got to because we were very close when we vacated the runway. Uh, terrain on ND is off. Brake fans are on if required. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our wheels. No, we are doing just fine. 280 degrees. We're doing fine. All right, flap open. APU is trying to start. Let's go through our parking checklist. Uh, park brake pressure is green. Everything looks good. Uh, Anti-ice is off. APU bleed can come on as soon as our APU is started. Go ahead and check and make sure that we're as far up as we need to be. I feel like we could maybe creep just a little closer. And there we go. Absolutely bang on perfect, even though auto gate doesn't want to connect. That's fine, we don't need auto gate, do we, folks? All right, APU bleed on engine master two and one coming off. Uh, runway turn off lights are off. Uh, nose wheel lights, wing lights, pardon me, beacon stays on, wing lights come off. Um, Beacon off, seatbelts off. Elapsed time, stop. The one hour, 22 minutes, 54 seconds is our block time today. Looks like we've got seatbelts, elapsed time, fuel pumps all off. Turn our nav and logo lights off as well. Beacon is off. Uh, fuel pumps, transponder to standby. Uh, McDo's to dim, which we don't really need to worry about. Brake fans off. Ooh, looks like we've heated up a little bit. Let's go ahead and turn those on. Actually, we're not going to worry about it because we are stopping for the night. We're going to go through the securing the check with the the aircraft checklists. Parking brake check on. Adiers off. One, two, and three. Exterior lights all off. Uh, APU bleed off. APU master off. Emergency exit lights off. No smoking off. Battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Christchurch, New Zealand, in Australia. That was a surprisingly good landing for me. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very proud of that landing. 
Um, I did not quite catch 259 feet per minute. I have done better. Not often, though. With an, only an 8.93 second float. That's a very nice float. Um, vertical speed is not... It's not good. But I've done worse. Let's go ahead and take a look at our external. Make sure that we don't have anything open that shouldn't be. Perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and put this into... We're going to toggle replay. Well, no, first, first thing we're going to do, folks, is we are going to I don't know how FlightAware is working oh, or Project Fly. I'm going to close that for now. But we are going to finish the flight. We're going to complete the flight here. What's our shutdown fuel? Let's see. 4620. <laughs> Pardon me. notes in there I, I apologize for doing that during during uh, stream time however i'm doing it because i want to make sure that i do it while it's fresh in my mind so that i can remember what the hell i was talking about what i was doing okay so now that i have completed this flight what does this say our landing rate was 177 that's that's not bad so that's not much of a difference. It is a difference. All right, so now let's go ahead and toggle replay mode. Now that our trackers are off, back up. Get us on approach right about here. And then let's go to view external runway. Back it up just a little bit. Where's our touchdowns? Right here. All right. Go ahead and watch this replay real quick. No, you can't really see much yet, but we're right out there in the middle of the soup. Okay, anytime now, airplane. Anytime you want to get close. Go ahead and eat it up just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Let's go full speed from here. We're looking at about 157 is where we're going to want to start all our other replays. Maybe 157.30. And 157 is fine. All right. Here we go. I want to see this. I want to see how close we get. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, and look at that. Hold it, hold it. Put her down. It looks like we fl we flared probably just a tiny bit early. All right, let's go back to 157-ish. Look at this from the tower. Go ahead and unlock our camera and pan up just a little bit. So we don't get that piece of the tower in the way.
All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Wide slope looks pretty good. Keeping the nose relatively down. There you can see the flare. Ooh, I was maybe 50 feet outside the touchdown zone. Alright, let's get at least one more. Not 150. Let's get one. And let's give us... Here we go. That's a view. <laughs> this is something you'd usually see from your seat. Look at that. Hear the ground effect? Oof. Let's go ahead and go a few more seats back. Look at this from behind the wing. Let's try this again. One fifth. Seven. There we go. This is a wing view. That was a pretty solid hit. I, I believe that was a two, 250 something. I believe it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Christchurch. Thank you guys so much for being here for this flight today on uh, my channel on Areko Katak. Um, I'm planning on changing that just a little bit. I'm going to go to, like, uh, Iraq ATK for Iraq attack because that's what it's supposed to be at this point. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to be looking at that later. Right now, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate so, so much everybody being here, enjoying the flight, enjoying the fun. If you have any, any ideas, please Hit up the Discord. I know the bot just sent it out a little while ago. I'm going to go ahead and pimp that Discord again. Pop in there. Put it in flight suggestions. If you need a tool, I'm going to put one in there tonight. It's called Flight Connections, I think. Uh, let me see if I can't find that. Play... Yeah, flightconnections.com. I'm going to I'm going to throw this in chat. 
and I'm also going to wind up throwing it in the Discord. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now while you guys are listening to make sure that I don't screw it up and manage to forget. That should be us for the night. I've gone ahead and I've put that tool into the Discord. And I will pin it here in just a minute. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you guys next time. I should be back tomorrow doing some Trials of Mana. And hopefully you guys will enjoy that as much as you have this. I will see you guys next time. Have a great afternoon, evening, night, whatever it is, wherever you are. I hope you have a fantastic night. Remember that no, no matter how difficult things get, we always have each other. Please be a part of the community because some people need the support, right? Just being there, just talking can be enough to help change somebody's life for a day or two. So um, that's your daily dose of seriousness from a rack attack. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.